under the armpit mm. without a breast lump. Yes. So swelling under the armpit should be taken seriously. Mm. Then skin changes on the breast because the breast skin, there is a normal skin. Yes. Which means our patients need to know what a normal skin is. Mm. Then the abnormal. So when you see changes yeah. on the skin of the breast, you mm. take it seriously. Yeah. Then swelling of the hand mm. on the same side of the breast. Yeah. Is, 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 I saw some patients with just swelling mm. of the hand yes. on the same side of the breast. And they had breast cancer. Yes. So we need to take these symptoms seriously. Then others just had pain. Breast pain. Yes. Say, but so I have pain in the breast. Mm. So pain in the breast should be taken seriously. Yes. So when you get pain in the breast, you, you, you call your doctor. You go to the doctor immediately. You don't go to the herbalist, you run to the doctor. Yes. So that a, an early diagnosis can be made. Because yes. a lot of things can be done when breast cancer is diagnosed early. Yep. A lot can be done with chua. Mm. It can be chewed. Yes. as opposed to patients who delay. Then those, there are those who had a nipple retracted in. Yeah. So the breast has a nipple. Mm. But now when that nipple is going in, it's not normal. Mm. So we call it nipple retraction. Mm. There are those who had nipple retraction and with no pain. So I talked of a breast lump. Yeah. I've talked of a nipple discharge. Yeah nipple retraction, mm. abnormal changes on the skin, mm. swelling under the armpit, swelling of the arm yes. on that same side of the breast, and breast pain, yes. where the common symptoms we saw during that study. And what I am getting from all this is that as people, both male and female, we should be aware of our breasts so that we are able to notice that changes, to notice that now I am feeling abnormal pain, to notice that there is a lump, to notice that this is different, for whatever is coming out of my nipple is actually different from milk, especially if you're not a breastfeeding mother, yeah? To notice that my hand has changed in size and it is now solid. So awareness of, uh, of your breasts is very very important dr odong i would like to know when patients present with these symptoms yeah how do we examine for breast cancer as a doctor what are the things you do to actually be like ah i think you can actually go home eh? this pain will go away ah i think we should actually further uh, maybe investigate check you out to be sure that you actually do not have breast cancer. Yeah. Yeah, of course, when a patient comes with a breast lump, we always take it seriously. We assess thoroughly. We do more history because when a patient comes to you, you take more history. History, it means you ask more about the symptoms. Mm. For example, when someone comes with breast lump, you ask how long has it been there? Does yeah. it pain? How did it start? Uh, do you have a family member with the same problem? Yeah. Have you been operated? So we take history. We take a comprehensive clinical history. We do clinical exam. And then we investigate. We do imaging. Yeah. Under investigation, there's what we call imaging and laboratory. Yeah. So in breast imaging, and obviously, of course, we, we do biopsies. Mm. We take a sample. Some people call it kanyama. Mm. We take a sample from that swelling yeah. and we send it to the pathologist for examination. Yes. So this is what we call the triple assessment. Mm. Clinical assessment, that is the doctor's history and physical examination. Yes. Then there is what we call uh, imaging yeah. or radiological. Mm. Uh, and then histopathology, yes. the biopsy. So that is the triple assessment that we do for all these patients and we make a diagnosis. So in imaging, there are several imaging modalities that you can do. Yeah. For the younger ladies, you do breast ultrasound. And then for the older ladies, you can also do mammogram. Mm. Some countries begin at 40 years, adult 35, you, you, you do mammogram. Mammogram is a special x-ray for the breast. Mm. And of course, in Uganda, we have a few centers, yeah. like two, 
Mulago and uh, the Zambia, they do ma Mulago, Mulago, that is the Uganda Council Institute. So you do a mammogram, you should be able to pick. And uh, you can do, you can also do MRI, mm. though it is not so available. Yes. So the most available imaging is the breast mm. ultrasound. Yes. And it cuts across all the age groups. Yeah. Imaging is important because there are lumps that you can miss mm. when you're doing physical examination. Yes. Especially lumps less than two centimeters. Mm. Even if you touch the breast, you will not be able to feel it. Yeah. But when you do imaging, you are able to, to see, see, to feel, yes. and to see the mass. Then after that imaging, if you have picked the mass, of course there are other imaging modalities, but in our setting, it is the breast ultrasound. Yeah. Then you do a biopsy. Mm. Biopsy Ayama. means you take a small piece of the, of the swelling. Yes. Then you look at it under the microscope. Yes. That is called histopathological examination. Yes. Then you make a histological diagnosis of breast cancer, yes. which means breast cancer is histological. Yes. And the most common histology in our setting and in that study was ductal carcinoma. Ductal carcinoma means these are cancers that come from the tubes that transport the milk, milk yes. from the gland to the nipple. Yes. So that is the most common histology that we found during the study, yes. ductal carcinoma. Yes. Then there's also what we call lobular carcinoma. carcinoma. So all these are histological diagnoses. Yes. Then we also have what we call pageant disease of the nipple. We have cyst sarcoma phylloides. Yes. But the most common was the ductal carcinoma. carcinoma and it is histological. Yes. Our viewers, we have learned the importance of not just you uh, noticing the changes that are happening to your breasts, but also the importance of you going to your doctor quickly enough so that they can take more history, they can ask you more questions, they get to examine you, but also for you to get an opportunity for you to get these investigations done. We have learned that uh, cancer of the breast is made, is diagnosed when they have taken a sample of that mass or of that thing that you felt that is abnormal in your breast. Yeah, That is the only way we can diagnose breast cancer. Therefore, it is important because you cannot take that mass from your body yourself, yes, and you'll not be able to make that diagnosis. So it is important that we actually go and visit our health centers. We are going to be right back to continue discussing breast cancer with Dr. Odong. Keep it on the Doc Talk Show. You are watching the Doc Talk Show. Fellow citizens, Thank you for diligently and consistently honoring your tax obligations. It is through your collective contribution that the government is able to provide social services. In spite of the simultaneous global crises that have hit our livelihoods and businesses, you have proven that as a people, we can rise up and still mobilize domestic revenues enough to sustain us as a country. As we close in to the end of this financial year, I urge you not to lose the momentum and resilience that you have demonstrated all year through. Please file your returns and remit your taxes in time to avoid unnecessary inconveniences that come with non-compliance. As Uganda Revenue Authority, we are committed to facilitate you in honoring your obligations through a reliable and delightful service. I invite you to use our various e-platforms to remit your tax contributions with ease and on time. We have extended all our working hours at all our border stations, the bonded warehouses, and service centers. Should you need further assistance, please contact us via our toll-free lines and our WhatsApp platforms. Tax is the surest way of liberating our country from the bondage of economic dependence. Let us all play our part, pay our dues, and vote our country for God and my country. Uganda Revenue Authority, developing Uganda together. You are watching the Dark Talk Show.
Welcome back to the Doc Talk Show. Before we broke off, we had learned that uh, breast cancer is actually very, very common in Uganda. For every 100,000 people that we see, 23% of those have breast cancer. Unfortunately, 80% of those patients present with advanced cancer, more than 80% actually. And there are different reasons to why people become come late to hospital and the highest reason was because people ignore symptoms that they start to feel for more than three months before they actually present but also we learned that for us to be able to make a diagnosis of breast cancer we need to take a biopsy yeah? part of that mass that we usually that that the, the patient would have and then get to examine it in the lab for us to be able to diagnose breast cancer. And I'm wondering, Dr. Odong, are these services available across the country? At what level of healthy care would someone get a biopsy done and histology done? Because I don't think everybody can come to Zambia or to Uganda Cancer Institute to have um, a mammography done. And I also don't think every health center in Uganda has an ultrasound scan. So how are we going to screen people for breast cancer? How are we going to diagnose diseases early, this disease early? Yeah, of course, <clears throat> the services, you, of course, the Ugandan health system has challenges. It's a struggling healthcare system. Yeah. But obviously, we, we can do awareness. Yeah. We can do what we call the self-breast exam mm. to try and make diagnosis early. So it comes back to the population. If you see these symptoms that I talked about already, yeah. you take seriously. And again, I want to encourage people to start doing what we call the self-breast examination. Because what is this? It's self affordable. Breast? Self breast, it means you are examining your breast. Yeah. You are examining your breast. So you stand in front of a mirror and then you lift up your hands as you look for swellings. You compare both breasts, mm. the left and the right breast. Mm. You should look the same almost. Mm. So if there is a problem with one, then it will not look the same like the normal one. Yes. So the swelling will be there. So you look at the size of the breast when you're examining. You want to see are they the same size? How about the shape mm. of the breast, the contour of the breast? So when you're doing self-breast exam, you look at the size, you look at the contour, you look at the shape. Mm. Is it the same? Mm. Then after that, you put one hand on the back of your head. Mm. And then you palpate, you touch, you touch the contralateral breast with the opposite hand. So you do like this, and then you touch, yeah, and you feel mm. for any mass, mm. any swelling. Then you repeat the same for the other breast also. Yes. So this self breast examination can be done in the premenopausal women. You do on the tenth day of the cycle. Premenopausal means uh, women who are still experiencing their period. Mm, so you don't confuse periods, tenderness or pain in the yeah. breast that comes with periods mm. with the pain that comes because of breast cancer. Yeah. That's why we are sensitive about the, the ten, time, the time yes. with premenopausal. Mm. So breast self-examination is affordable. It can be done even in the village, even deep where there are no services of a doctor. Yes. You can examine your breast. Yes. But the only limitation is that when the mass is still small and mm. you are not able to touch it, yeah. that's when you, you still need a doctor. Mm. And uh, the good thing is that these days in Health Center 4s, mm. we have doctors. Yeah. Health Center 4s are there in every health sub-district. Mm. So which means every district has health center fours mm. and district hospitals. Yes. So I encourage people to go to the doctor yes. in the health center four, in the district hospital, and the regional referral hospital. There yes. are surgeons in the regional referral hospital. Most regional referral hospitals now have surgeons mm. who can take these biopsies. Even medical officers can take biopsies yeah, true. from the breast. Mm. So go to the doctor, 
if you've seen these symptoms, please run to the doctor quickly yeah. before it is too late. They take a biopsy and they make a diagnosis. Then the other screening tool is the mammogram. I've already mentioned about it before. If you have access to a mammogram, the good thing, the Cancer Institute now has a mobile mammogram. Yes. It goes to the villages with a mammogram machine mm. screening. I think such programs should be encouraged and government should invest more in yes. screening so that we have official screening programs known to all Ugandans. Sure. This will help catch the disease when yeah. it is still early and it can be cured. Yeah. Mm. That is very, very, very important. We are emphasizing catching the disease when it is still very early. And for us to be able to catch breast cancer when it is still very early, when we still have a lot of options to be able to treat your disease, it starts with you. It starts with you taking the initiative to do a self-breast exam, something you can actually do every day, every week, you know. Encourage your sisters, encourage your mothers, encourage your brothers to do a self-breast exam so that they are able to Notice these things that we have talked about, abnormal pain, abnormal swellings, any skin changes, yeah, swelling of their hands, the different symptoms that we actually spoke about in our initial segment so that they are actually able to go further to a doctor and then the doctor can go ahead to order for an ultrasound scan, send you a mammograph where it's possible to do a an MRI and also to do a biopsy for you and ultimately we'll be able to get breast cancer early and then we are able to treat you early. Dr. Odong, now that we know how breast cancer does present, we have understood the risk factors, we've understood um, how we can catch it early. What are the treatment options for those whose disease is still early and for those whose disease is advanced, do we just look at them and we are like, man, breast cancer is a death sentence or there is something that we can actually do about it? There is a lot. There is a lot that can be done. Yeah. Breast cancer, when we get it early, uh, there are options. Yeah. One of them is surgery. Yes. You, you, you can operate. Of course, these options are local interventions mm. and systemic. But in early disease, we do surgery. Mm. And this surgery can involve removing the whole breast or it can involve removing part of the breast yes. with the negative resection margins. Yeah. There is what we call breast conservation surgery where you remove only part of the breast with a problem. Yeah. So you can go to theater, you cancel this patient, and you remove only part of that breast mm. with the disease. Yes. But when you're doing this type of surgery, you go a little bit into the normal breast tissue. Yes. You cut until you enter at least one centimeter into the normal breast tissue, mm. which is tumor-free. Mm. So that is called breast conservation surgery. Yes. But that is still not so widespread in Uganda. Because people present late. Yeah, people yeah. present late. We, we don't do that one. But other countries do it. That's where breast surgery has gone. Yeah. So you do this and you give the pathologist to examine for tumor-free resection margins. Yes. That's what we call the frozen section. Yeah. So breast conservation surgery is there for early disease. Yeah. Then mastectomy, mm. simple mastectomy, then radical mastectomy with mm. lymph node dissection. Yes. So those are the surgical options. You remove the whole breast, and then this, you, the breast can be reconstructed. Yeah. Some people fear that when they remove their breast, they will disfigure them. Mm, but, and I'm a woman. Yeah, yes, people will but say have only the one breast, breast. Can be reconstructed. Yes. You mm. can reconstruct the breast and you will not know. Yeah. So you do breast mastectomy and then you dissect the lymph nodes in the armpit. That swell, I said earlier on that patients come with swelling under the armpit. Yes. So you take away the breast, you take away the swellings under the armpit because the breast cancer can also spread to the armpit. Yeah. So you take away those swellings and then you do another treatment called radiotherapy. Yes. 
Amasanyalaze. So, yes. Mm. So you, you, you do radiotherapy, then there's what we call hormonotherapy. Yeah. These ones prevent recurrence mm. of the disease. Yes. Because the disease can recur. So surgery alone, of course, plays, plays a big role yes. in the treatment. But there are other treatment modalities that we do after surgery. Yeah. That's what we call adjuvant treatment. Yes. Adjuvant means after the primary treatment, which is surgery. Mm. Of course, you can also give what we call new adjuvant treatment. Before the surgery. Uh, before the surgery, you give new adjuvant treatment. Radiotherapy, people call it masanyalase. Mm. It kills all other remaining cancer cells. Mm, yeah. That has not been cleared by the surgery. Yeah. Then it prevents recurrence yes. of the disease. Yes. So there is also what we call hormonotherapy. Yeah. There are patients with receptors. Yes. The, the, there is something called receptor in the, in the cancer. Estrogen, progesterone receptors. Yeah. There are patients with those receptors. Mm. So there are drugs that you give that, that will target. prevent the disease. Mm. To, to progress and to recur. Yes. One of them is called tamoxifen. I think this is available now, even in the Uganda Cancer Institute. Yeah. Tamoxifen is available. It is given for up to five years. Yeah. Then there's what we call chemotherapy. Yeah. Chemotherapy can also be given after the surgery to prevent the disease from coming back. Yeah. Chemotherapy is available yes. in the Cancer Institute. And then there's what we call immuno. Therapy. Therapy. Here we use the power of the immune system to attack this cancer cell and, and kill, kill them. Yes. So immunotherapy. So I've talked of surgery, I've talked of radiotherapy, I've talked of chemotherapy, hormonotherapy, there is immunotherapy, there is targeted therapy. Yes. So all these are options that we have and they're available. And they work better when the patient comes early to yes. the hospital. It is very, very important to note that all these beautiful um, solutions that we are telling you about this evening are available and they work better when you come very early. Thank you to Cameline Men's Collection for sponsoring the Doc Talk Show and the National Medical Stores. Do not go anywhere. We are going to be back after a short break. You are watching the Doc Talk Show. Meet Professor Petero. He knows something every hustler in UG is gonna love. Oh, see. You see, I was just trying to uh, get the document to register for Airtel Manifest. Yeah, you don't need the documents. You just said it for register. Yeah. What's going on here? He sells things from the shop, and behind my back, he gets the money and gives it to his Google friends. <laughs> <laughs> but just get Airtel Manifest so that all money comes direct to your business wallet, and only you, the owner, have access to it. Just now. Star 185, start 10, start 10, hush, and now you are on. No waiting. No. Huh? This insanity is sweet. Give them also. I only take Airtel Money Pay. It's easy and secure. Yes, become a safer and more efficient cash free business today. Easy. No mixing your business money with your Kameza money. No, that's efficient. Airtel Money. Instant, secure, borderless. You are watching the Doc Talk Show. We are glad that you have kept with us all this time. And it's been a very informative session that we have had this evening. Thanks to Cameline Men's Collection found at Zebra Plaza. They deal in uh, men's wear, ties, suits, boxers, uh, socks. Uh, shirts, trousers, everything that a man would actually desire to have in their wardrobe. And the national medical stores who distribute drugs and sundries across the nation. We are grateful that you're sponsoring the Doc Talk Show and it is coming live to you in your home. So if you have not invited your family, your friends, everybody to tune in, please do. Yeah, because we are, we are soon winding up and we have yeah, we have shared really very important information. Before we broke off, we learned that um, there are options that we can give to a woman or a man who comes in with breast cancer and it is still early disease. Yet the picture that we are seeing in Uganda is different. Over 
80% of the women that we are seeing are presenting with advanced disease. So doctor, what do we do for the ones who come with advanced disease? Do we, do we tell them you're going to die? It's the end of the road for you? What do we do? What options of treatment do we have for advanced Yeah, we cancer? still have options. Even yeah. for those who come late, there's what we call toilet mastectomy. Mm. So surgery still has a role. Yeah. For example, a patient comes with forgetting breast mass. It is too much for them. There is an ulcer. It's a wound. Eh? They mm. are also come with a wound on yeah. the breast, smelling wound. So you can still do what we call toilet mastectomy. Yes. You clean the area so that it can improve the quality of life. Mm. Then you can bring in the medical oncologists. You can bring in the palliative care team. Yeah the social workers. This mm. is when you have to really bring the whole team on the board yes. and even surgeons. So treatment of breast cancer is multidisciplinary. Yeah. So you, you have to involve other people. So we give them palliative care. Mm. You control that pain. Yeah. You can still give palliative chemoradiation yes. therapy. You can still do something for them. Mm. But again, most of the time, it's good to come early. Yeah. Early, early is the best. Early is the best. Yes, because mm. this late thing, the treatment is there but does not work well. It still. will not cure the it disease. It doesn't cure the disease. Yes. Palliation, it means you're just trying to improve the quality of their lives mm. but does not cure the disease. Yes. So the disease is cured when you come early. When you come late, we just help you to be comfortable yeah. with life but the disease remains. Yes. So that is the problem when you come late. Yeah. Come early. Let us come early, but then if you are learning that and you're suspecting that maybe your cancer is now advanced, yeah, you, you have early, uh, you have, your cancer is now uh, bigger and maybe we cannot cure you, there is still hope for you, there is still care for you. So we encourage you to go to a health unit near you, they will refer you to the appropriate place where you're going to get care so that you can still enjoy life. And now that we are actually talking about cure and um, prolonging life and maybe uh, palliating you, uh, what time on average do we have for a person who has uh, early breast cancer versus another one who comes in with um, late breast cancer disease? What are the mortality rates like? What are the outcomes when they are cured? How long do they have to live? What is the picture like? Okay, the survival rates. Yeah. For early disease, survival rates can be up to 90%. Five-year survival. Yeah. Because when you say five-year survival, it means uh, what percentage of the patient will still be alive mm. after five years yes. from the time the diagnosis was made? Mm. You see, if you come early, five years survival, 90%. That is a good figure. Yeah, true. It's almost 100% that you'll be alive after five years. Yeah. But when you come with the late disease, the survival rate is like 30%, mm. five-year survival. Mm. So it means if the diagnosis is made today, mm. five years from today, you will only have 30% mm. of the people, which means the other 70% will you will have lost to them. Mm. So it's a serious problem. Yeah. Late diagnosis, 30% survival. Early diagnosis, 90% survival. Yeah, so which means years. we have breast cancer survivors. There are mm, many. Yes. Those who come early, I even know of a friend who's still surviving. Yeah. Of breast cancer. But of recent, I'm told we lost a doctor. Yeah. yeah. A few days ago. A few days ago, we mm. lost a doctor of breast cancer. So it's a serious problem. Yeah. So the earlier, the better. Late diagnosis, survival rate is small yeah. from the figures, from the statistics. Mm. So let's come early, let's look out for these symptoms, let's take them seriously. True. Mm. And I think the biggest question that our viewer might have right now is, uh, I do not want to go through this. I do not want to be, to be in the doctor's office. Some people fear coming to hospital. Some people may be still naive about doing a self-breast exam, yeah? And we've also learned that screening services are actually not available across the country. And they're like, ah, man, very many people are actually having a lot of breast cancer. How can I prevent it? Like me, I do not want to get it. 
what can I do not to catch breast cancer, especially if I'm falling in the risks that you talked about. I am older, I am using contraceptives, combined contraceptives, I am maybe not breastfed, I am having my first child late, I am obese, I, I, I smoke, you know. Uh, maybe I have a family history of my, my sister having breast cancer, or I have actually had breast cancer before and it has been cured. What are some of the things that I can do to prevent breast cancer happening to me? Yeah, of course, from the risk factors, we saw <laughs> lifestyle. <laughs> lifestyle has a role. We saw alcohol, smoking, obesity. So one of the ways that we can prevent breast cancer is through lifestyle changes. Yeah. Smoking, alcohol, we can leave that one. Mm. And control our lifestyle, sedentary lifestyle. We should do exercises so that we, we prevent the obesity. Mm. Exercise, eat well, do not smoke, breastfeed. Because if you have the opportunity to breastfeed, why not? Surely, why not? Uh, because some people get the opportunity, but they don't <laughs> breastfeed. They don't. I think it is a lifestyle also this Yeah, days. it is a lifestyle. That, that breastfeeding will disfigure them. Mm. They still want to maintain the figure, so they don't <laughs> breastfeed. So when you get the opportunity to breastfeed, breastfeed. Yeah. Because it has been demonstrated that breastfeeding is protective. Yeah. When you breastfeed, you are not likely to get it. Mm. And when you get children early, you are not likely to get it. So those risk factors can be modified. Yeah. Then there's what we call the prophylactic mastectomy, mm. especially for the high-risk patients yeah. with family history of breast cancer. You have these risk factors. We can do prophylactic mastectomy. It means we are removing the breast before you develop the disease. Mm. And we can reconstruct for you the breast. Yes. That breast reconstructive surgery is now available. Yes. Even in Uganda, reconstruction yeah. services are there. And then use of tamoxifen, it's a drug that prevents breast cancer yes. from at the receptor level, the hormone. Mm. You know, it has been demonstrated that long exposure to estrogen. Estrogen is a female hormone. Mm. Long exposure to estrogen is a risk for breast cancer. Yes. Now, this tamoxifen will prevent that. Tamoxifen, they give you prophylactically for patients or, or patients at a high risk. Yeah. Then there is also the screening tool I talked about. Yes. Self-breast exam, mammogram. You, you, it can be done, especially for those who have ever suffered from breast cancer. That is very yeah. true. It was wonderful hosting you, Dr. Odong, on the Doc Talk show. Before we close, um, some parting shots for our viewers. Yeah, breast cancer is here. We need to take the symptoms seriously. When you have a lung, take it seriously. Go to hospital. Call your doctor. There are people with their doctors. Yeah. You can call your doctor immediately so that you don't delay. Change lifestyle. Do not eat a lot of fat. Avoid obesity. And then breastfeed when there is opportunity. Yeah. Then I also want to send my greetings, mm. Dr. Nyanz Gavin, the staff of Jaro Hospital. Thank you very much. The urology unit of Mulago Hospital, Dr. Frank Asibwe. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Odong. This show was so informative. I believe we have learned a lot and I'm sure we are going to take breast cancer serious for both the male and the female. This show wouldn't have been possible without our sponsors. Thank you to the National Medical Stores for sponsoring the Doc Talk Show and Kameli Men's Collection. Until next time, Dr. Nagadia Catherine, your host. You are watching the Doc Talk Show. The mistake of rambling on and on about your personal issues to customers when you know very well that your job description does not include such. 
forgetting that you have been hired to provide services to the customer and not to read entertainment news to that customer. Christmas the mistake could have been caused by a knowledge gap where possibly Fred did not know the kind of conversation that would engage an international investor such as Alice.